We're here once more, third of our weekly series of morning Bhagavatam classes, Motivational Mondays, Transcendental Tuesdays, Wisdom Wednesdays here on Wednesday, the 1st of July, 2020. <laughs> Vande ham sri guru siyata para kamaram sri guru vaishnavam sya sri rupam sagadatam sahagana ragaratam vitam stam sadevam sadvaitam sabadutam parijana saitam krishna chaitanya devam sri radha krishna paran sahagana ladita sri vishikan vitam sya narayanam namaskritam naram chevanarotamam devam sarasatim vyasam tato jayo dhiratnashta prayashu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevya bhagavatiyatama shoki bhakti bhavati naistiki Nigamaka Padurgari Tamparam Shukamakaram Mita Dravisamitam Pivata Bhagatam Rashamalio Mahora Hora Sika Bhubi Baba Kaham Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutta De Sumadi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani and Namaste Sarasati Devi Garavani Pachari Ne Nirvishe Sasani Vari Paskata De Satari Si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Si Advaita Gadadhar Si Vasadi Gava Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Good morning on this Wednesday, Wisdom Wednesday, Malini Preeti from Malaysia, Prashant and Sachi, Sundari Priya, thanks for joining us, Thomas, Manasaganga, Vaibhavi, Govinda, Joe, thank you all for joining us. Our, vec our text today is the 22nd verse in the second chapter, first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Let's just jump right into the ocean of nectar, shall we? <laughs> Atavaya kaveo nityam bhaktiam paramaya muda vasudeva bhagavati kurvanti atma prashadanim. <clears throat> Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Certainly, therefore, since time immemorial, all transcendentalists have been rendering devotional service to Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead, with great delight because such devotional service is enlivening to the self. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes these words. The specialty of devotional service under the personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, is specifically mentioned herein. Lord Krishna is the Swayam Rupa personality of Godhead and all of their forms of Godhead, beginning from Sri Baladev, Sankarshan, Vasudev, Aniruddha, Pradumna, and Narayan, and extending to the Purusha avatars, Guna avatars, Leela avatars, Yuga avatars, and many thousands of other manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Our Lord Sri Krishna's plenary portions and integrated parts. The living entities are separated parts and parcels of the personality of Godhead. Therefore, Lord Sri Krishna is the original form of Godhead and he is the last word in transcendence. Thus, he is more attractive to the higher transcendentalists who participate in the eternal pastimes of the Lord. In forms of the personality of Godhead, other than Sri Krishna and Baladev, there is no facility for intimate personal contact as in the transcendental pastimes of the Lord at Brajabhumi. The transcendental pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna are not newly accepted, as argued by some less intelligent persons. His pastimes are eternal and manifested in due course once in a day of Brahmaji as the sun rises on the eastern horizon at the end of every 24 hours. <clears throat> it said, uh, Sahasa Yuga Paryantama Hariya Brahmano Vidu Ratam Ruga Sahasanam Teo Ratta Vidarjana. A thousand ages make up one day of Brahma. Well, what's an age? Sahasra Yuga. Yuga is a, basically a Chatur Yuga. In a, in a cosmic year, there are four seasons, just like we have spring, summer, fall, and winter. So similarly, there's uh, 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 Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwarpa Yuga, and Kali Yuga. And those, those four make up altogether 4,300,000 years. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Sahasra, a thousand of those make up one day of Brahma. So one day of Brahma is 4,300,000 times a thousand. And Lord Krishna comes throughout his various incarnations. He has six categories of incarnation. And he comes, in, at least in his original form as Lord Sri Krishna, once it is explained here in a day of Brahma. Uh, so his incarnations are not newly accepted, as Prabhupada says, but they, they go back eons and eons and eons and eons. We're talking literally billions and trillions of years. 
and Lord Krishna comes according to scheduled measurement. And it's not that he's born and then he dies. His most recent incarnation, his original form, was 5,300 years ago. He remained, he sojourned on the planet for 125 years. But it was not that he was born into the world and then he died. The example is given that when you're looking out a window and someone passes across your line of vision, you didn't see them to the right of you if they're passing from right to left. You didn't see them to the right of you because it was a wall blocking. They passed from right to left and after they passed from the the window, you, you didn't see them again. You didn't see them in the beginning, you didn't see them in the end, but it didn't mean that they appeared uh, just when you saw them, nor did they disappear when you couldn't see them anymore. They're existing before they came into your vision, and they're existing after they came into your vision. So these various avatars and incarnations of the Lord who come according to a scheduled program just like you look in the TV guide and you see what's coming Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, Thursday morning at 8 a.m., noon, and so on and so forth. Some way, the Bhagavatam is kind of a TV guide that you can tell when the Lord is coming, for what purpose he's coming, uh, from, through who, which parents he's coming, in what village, and what province he's coming. And all these are since time immemorial, so they're not newly accepted as uh, as Prabhupada says. Um, <clears throat> so here it, the term is used, Bhaktanam Anurupatma Darshanam. It means that the Lord manifests multi-forms, and it's important to note that all these innumerable forms that the Lord manifests are multi-forms. It's not that he's some ineffable, homogeneous force field, and then when he wants to appear in this material world, he assumes a form within the three modes of material nature. That is not at all the case. That's what Sankaracharya speculated, but that's refuted through the Vaishnava traditions, the Vedic literature, and our commentators. That these forms of the Lord in six categories for the creation and maintenance of the material worlds, they are each and every one of them in eternal form. Um, not assumed form and not composed of the modes of material nature, passion, goodness, or ignorance. Lord Brahma verifies this point. Ramadi Mortishu Kala Niyamena Tishtan Nanavataro Makaroda Bhuvanishu Kintu Krishna Sayam Samava Paravam Pamanyo Govinamari Purusham Tamahang Bajami. Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, uh, in whose one day Krishna appears says, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who manifested himself personally as Krishna and the different incarnations, avatars in the world, in the forms of Rama, Nishringa, Vamana, etc., as his subjective portion. Subjective portion means they're emerging out of his own internal energy. They're not emerging out of his external material energy, but they are emerging out of his internal energy. And let's just run down... Uh, the list, there are six types of avatars, Purusha, Lila, Guna, Manvantara, Yuga, Shaktavish avatars. Now, the first category of Purush avatar are Kananadakshai Vishnu, who lies down in a corner of the spiritual world, and from whose breathing and from the pores of his body, the universes emanate, originally like little golden eggs. Then the second uh, Purush avatar is Garvadakshai Vishnu, who enters within each and every universe and causes the universe to grow. Then the third Purush avatar is Shirodakshai Vishnu, who enters into every atom and the hearts of every living being. And when there's trouble within the universe, it is to Shirodakshai Vishnu, who lies on an island, Shredadweep, in the ocean of milk, that Lord Brahma himself uh, goes and addresses in order for relief from um, disturbances within this particular universe. So that's the first category of avatars, Purusha. Other, second is Leela. Leela means pastimes. These are a list of avatars who perform relishable pastimes in this material world according to time, place, and circumstances. And this is a partial list. The Kumaras, Narada Muni, Varaha, Matsya, 
the Das avatars, the ten avatars of Vishnu, are included within this list. Matsya, Yagya, Nara Narayan, Kardami, that means Kapila, the son of Kardama, Datatreya, Hayashirya, Hamsa, Prishni Garba, Rishab, Pritu, Narshringa, Korma, Danvantari, Mohini, Vamana, Parasaram, Ramachanda, Vyasadeva, Balaram, Krishna, Buddha, and Kalki. And then the Guna avatars. These uh, represent the three modes of material nature, Sattva, uh, goodness, Raja, passion, and Tama, ignorance. Representing the mode of goodness is Lord Vishnu himself, the maintainer, the preserver. The creator, who's in the mode of passion, is Lord Brahma. And representing the mode of ignorance is Lord Shiva, who ultimately winds up and destroys the cosmos uh, at the time of annihilation. Now, our fourth out of six categories of avatars are Manvantaras. In that uh, 1,000 Chatur Yuga period of Brahma's single day, 4,300,000 times 1,000, there are 14 Manvantaras who have to do with managing the material world. So if you divide 14 into 1,000, I believe it is uh, 72 Chatur Yugas. In other words, each Manu lives for a period of 4,300,000 times 72. So the names of those 14 Manus during our current day of Brahma are Yagya, Vibhu, Satyasena, Hari, Vaikunta, Ajita, Sarvabhoma, Risha, Vishvaksena, Dharma, Sudama, Yogeshwara, and Brihad Banu. Now finally, the Yuga avatars. There's again, as I mentioned, the first uh, age is the golden age, Sattva Yuga, and it lasts for 1 million, 1.8 million years. And the avatar in that age is described as assuming a white color, son of Devahuti, and his name is Kapila Dev. The next age is the Treta Yuga age. It lasts for 1.2 million years. The avatar in this age is described as red, and I'm not sure whether that's Hayagriva or Prishni Garba. And then in the third age, the Dwarpa age, which is 800,000 years, Lord Krishna appears in his original form as the personality of Godhead just at the end of the Dwarpa age before the beginning of the Kali Yuga age. And then the color of the Lord who appears in the Kali Yuga age is golden. Krishna Varna Tisa Krishnam Sangha Paranga Parashadam Yagya Sankirtanam Prayaya Janti Pi Shumera Shaham. says in the age of Kali, the present age, which started 5,000 years ago, people who are endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the Lord who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Sankirtana Yagya. So those are the um, yuga avatars and our last category of avatars and sixth category is shakt abesh avatars and these are empowered incarnations who are limitless and just a few are mentioned here in the vedas in uh, in in divided up into direct and indirect avatars when the lord expands himself displaying a particular power of his opulence that is known as shakshat when he empowers a living entity with some particular shakti or power for a specific activity in order to represent the Lord, that living entity is called indirect or avesha incarnation. So some of those uh, in, indirect or avesha incarnations are again the four Kumaras, Narada, Brahma, King Pritu, Parasarama, and Veda Vyas, Mahamuni, King Bhapada, Durav, the literary incarnation of the Lord. It is described in the Shretasvatara Upanishad that there are 8,400,000 species or mortis or forms of life spread throughout the universe. <clears throat> but the forms of the Lord are not to be confused with these 8,400,000 species. These 8,400,000 species or types of bodies are awarded, you might say, to the living entities according to their entanglement in the gunas, the modes of material nature. Guna means rope. So we're either entangled in goodness, or we're entangled in passion, or we're entangled in ignorance, or any combination. In fact, 
When you multiply 3 by 3, you get 9. You multiply 9 by 9, you get 81. And so just from those original three modes of material nature, uh, with all of their permutations and commutations, you get 8,400,000 species of life. It's important to note, if you don't take anything away <laughs> this morning, take this away, that the avatars, the incarnations of the Lord in six different categories, none of them are a product of the modes of material nature as the impersonalist or Mayavadi philosophers headed up by Shankacharya would have you believe. They are all transcendental. They are, uh, most of them with eternal spiritual forms in their own planets in the spiritual world, having descended as a result of the Lord's internal potency to maintain, create, and annihilate the worlds, as well as to enliven the devotees who are incarcerated within this material world. If there are 8,400,000 differences of species of life, depending on the modes of material nature and depending on our karma, there are tens of millions of incarnations of the Lord at various times, place, and circumstances. If you've ever looked at a sunbeam coming through a window on a summer's day, and seen crossing through the sunbeam countless motes of dust, countless dust particles. This gives you an idea of the scale of the incarnations of the Lord. And these have to do with the maintenance of the universe, and mostly they're proceeding from Baladev, Sankarshan, Aniruddha, and Pradyumna. Now, Krishna himself, uh, flute playing Krishna, um, standing in a threefold, bending, all attractive form, with a peacock feather in his hair, the glint in his eyes, yellow dhoti. Krishna himself has even more forms than that. As many living entities there are, those are how many forms Krishna has. For Mother Yashoda, Krishna had a specific form according to the taste and quality of her love for him. For Nanda Baba, he had a specific form that Nanda Baha Baba interacted, reciprocated, and saw him with only Nanda Baba and no one else. For Madhu Mangala, for Sridham, for Lalita, Vishaka, Radharani, for Devaki, for Vasudev, and gotten the benefits from it. And honestly, people sit, they listen, they're impressed, they enjoy, say nice talk. And yet, most people walk out without any intention of reviving their dormant Krishna consciousness with the end of meeting God face to face in a specific incarnation, which is customized to the flavor of their love. So what can you do? Anyway, we try our level best. And then we also have uh, laziness. We also have dark corners in our own hearts as well. I'm not preaching from a platform of a uh, particular um, uh, pure selfless devotional service. I'm an aspiring devotee. But at least one should be willing to get one's feet wet. At least one should be willing to dip into the ocean of the nectar of devotion. Prahlad Maharaj says, Mahamnita Magna Chito. Prahlad, when he's asked for a benediction from the Lord of millions and millions of universes, Prahlad, when he's asked, what would you like? vast kingdoms, sovereignty, subjects, herds of horses, herds of cows, wealth, unlimited wealth, a lifespan extending into the hundreds of thousands of years. Prahlad says, I don't need anything because when I chant your holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare, I submerge in an ocean of nectar. We may not be there yet, but that's our goal. That's our aspirations. And if we could only just plant that seed, that eagerness, that utsav, that enthusiasm in our um, fellow creatures, that would be the success of our preaching mission. But unfortunately, even those who are spiritualists or who see them or call themselves spiritualists, those who are religious people, all too often what we find is that they imagine God to be like themselves. Instead of taking the authorized, what we call experienced testimony of Lord Brahma, as written in the Brahma Samhita, people imagine 
God, and naturally when you imagine God, when you use your limited mind, uh, and you're coming from a particular time and space, um, you're going to imagine God after your own image. You're going to imagine God after your own form. You're going to imagine God within the modes of material nature. <clears throat> For instance, Purana Purusha, it is said in Brahma Samhita, and we can also figure this out, that Purana Purusha, God is the oldest person. He existed before the manifested cosmos, before the sun, before the moon, before the stars. He's also the wisest person. So our experience of old people is white hair, wrinkles, um, arthritis, rheumatism, diseases, uh, bad smells. That's our experience, isn't it? Uh, we also experience that old people are tend to be smarter, wiser, more experienced than we are. And so judging from our own experience of old people, we, we imagine God himself to be old, white-haired, wrinkled uh, at the fag end of his energy, but very wise, an old, wise man. And that, uh, that uh, conception is so strong that Michelangelo went and laid on his back on a scaffolding with paint dripping into his eyes and breathing toxic fumes for eight years in order to depict that God, God that way on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. However, the actual and factual and historic appearances, scheduled appearances of the Incarnation, the crest jewel of which is Lord Sri Krishna, who personally came 5,000 years ago, and I love the way Prabhupada puts this, the answer to all imaginative iconography of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the appearance of the Lord Himself. He comes a Jopishan Abhyayatma, that imperishable, um, eternal Lord, descends Sambhavaya Atmamaya, not due to the force of karma, not due to the force of circumstances, not assuming a body within the modes of material nature, but he says Sambhavami Atmamaya. He descends in his original self-same spiritual body. And that should put to rest all speculations about the name, form, qualities, um, and attributes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We can take it from Lord Brahma, who is actually God, and not have to run the wheels of our mental and having smoke come from our ears, trying to determine with our puny brains who or what is God. Just take what's called the experience knowledge of Lord Brahma, who says, Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Anadiridir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. The Supreme Lord over all other lords, the avatar from whom all other avatars come, is called Krishna, and he has a body of Satchit Ananda Vigraha. We, as parts of Krishna, sharing his same qualities, also have bodies of Satchit Ananda, knowledge, bliss, and eternity. But he is Satchitananda Vigraha. He's the full and original omnipotent source of all other atmas, all other souls spread throughout all the universes. Anadiradir Govinda Sava Karana Karanam. People say, well, if God created everything, who created God? That's the definition of God. He created everything, nothing created him. He's the cause of all causes, but he has no cause. Sarva karana karana ahamadir ahamadir. And he pre-existed all of the living beings. Then what does he look like? We don't have to speculate. It's right there. You know, people uh, like to think of themselves as great theologians, great speculators, great philosophers, great searchers. And how too often do they run across the factual descriptions of the Lord transmitted by none other than Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, who's also the founder of our particular line of the civil succession, the experienced knowledge of Lord Brahma, 
and all of the other great saints and sages and realized souls, and they note it, and then they just move on, continuing with their search. Hello, your search is over now. You can, you can now uh, not waste further energy searching, and you can use that energy serving, but they won't do it because they like to think of themselves as big searchers. Um, how often does that happen? But the factual description of the all-attractive, the super-excellent of all the avatars, none have 100% of the attractive qualities as Krishna. Venam kanvantam aravinda dadaya taksham bahavatam samastiram buddhisam kandarpa koti kamanaya vishesha sarvam govinam maripurusham tamahang bhajahami Yam shayama sundaram he is blackish like the monsoon cloud before the rainy season. He has a flute to his lips and he stands in an enchanting threefold bended form. And the beauty of millions and millions of cupids falls down in defeat before the form of Shyama Sunda. Here it is. End of your search. <laughs> now should be the beginning of your service. Nitya Siddha, Krishna Prema, Sadhu Kadanai. The demigods, one time, they prayed to Lord Krishna as described in the Krishna book. When you appear in your different incarnations, you take different names and forms according to different situations. So all the many avatars in the six different categories, they come with a specific purpose, a specific function, according to time, place, and audience. But Krishna appears because he's all attractive and his purpose is not to adjust things within the universe so much as it is to attract, give the living beings a glimpse at that transcendent Lord who some or other we left and to invite us back home, back to Godhead. It is said of him by the demigods, you are called Shaima Sundara because of your transcendental beauty, which is like a blackish cloud. You are more beautiful than millions of cupids. Sometimes you're also called Giridhari because you lifted the hill known as Govardhan. Other times you're called Nanda Nandana or Vasudeva or Devaki Nandana because you appear as the son of Maharaj Nanda or Devaki or Vasudeva. Kunti addresses the Lord here. Krishnaya Vasudeva Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Devaki Nandanaya Cha Govinaya Namo Namaha. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the Lord who has become, who has appeared custom made before Vasudeva and custom made according to the flavor of Devaki's love and a custom made according to each and every one of the cowherd boys of Vrindavan and even the cows and even the cowherd maidens and said because Krishna is the original Shrayam Rupa, Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam, the best thing it's great, it's transcendental to hear about and to worship any of the innumerable avatars, Purusha, Leela, Manvantara, uh, Guna avatars, but the best subject matter for hearing of all is the Krishna's name, form, pastimes, and paraphernalia from a realized devotee who is particularly attracted by the form of Lord Krishna. This is the advice of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Cheto darpanam marjanam babadavagni nirvapanam sreya kaivara pachandi kavitaranam vidyabadu jivanam param vijayate sri krishna sankirtanam. The highest victory of a living entity would be to hear about the pastimes of none other than Krishna from the lips of pure devotees and avoid at all costs hearing about Krishna from non-devotees, from mental speculators, from academics, from monists. One can never develop love of God. One can never come to a factual realization of the qualities and attributes of Krishna by hearing from non-devotees. I remember about 1980, I was in Los Angeles Temple. We were doing a traveling festival in India on college campuses in Southern California. We were at Cal State Fullerton and I was manning the exhibits there, asking, answering questions of students. And one Indian man came up and he says, Swamiji, he says, I have so many doubts. 
He says, I read all these books about Krishna. It's all I do practically when I'm not working or maintaining my family. For the last 30 years, I just read books about Krishna, and yet I still have doubts. I said, who do you read? So I won't mention any, maybe a few Krishna Murti, Krishna Isra, Dr. Radha Krishna, um, even Gandhi. It, Gandhi is a great soul, there's no question. But coming from a platform of pure devotion, no. He made his own interpretation of the Bhagavad Gita. One lady asked Prabhupada when he first came to America, what is so special about your Bhagavad Gita? And Prabhupada said, what's special about it is it's not my Bhagavad Gita. It's Krishna's Bhagavad Gita. It's Bhagavad Gita as it is. Krishna says, Bhaktya mama bhijaniti yavan yas chetrajatya tato mam tatpato vishite tada nantanam you, you, after reading the Bhagavad Gita, you fall, you flop you, into the ocean of devotion. The whole point of Bhagavad Gita as it is, is to reveal the Supreme Personality of Godhead factually, not as the monists would like him, not as the impersonalists would have him, not as the fruit of workers would minimize him, but as he is, as the pure devotees, the realized souls see him. Otherwise, without reading Krishna's Bhagavad Gita, presented to you by Krishna's devotee, you're going to miss it. In the Gita itself, 9th chapter, 11th verse, Abhijanati mam mudha. Abhijanati means they, mudhas, foolish ass like men, they do not know me when I manifest my human-like form. The human-like form of Krishna is not the product of the imagination of a conditioned soul in the modes of material nature. No. The human-like form of Krishna is the source after which we are all created. We are created in the image of God. So the fact that we have a human form indicates that we are proceeding ultimately and, and, and antiquely, you might say, from the human-like form of Krishna. But foolish people, they don't understand Krishna when he appears in the human society and they miss it. They take him that he's an ordinary man or an extraordinary man or solely a historical personality and they don't pick up on the fact that he's Param Bam Ajanante Mama Bhutta Maheshwara. He's the Lord and the source of all that be in the spiritual and the material worlds. And Lord Krishna, I don't say it, but Lord Krishna himself says, Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature is the supreme Lord of all that be. And Prabhupada writes this word. Krishna's body is Satchinananda. He is the proprietor of everything that be, and he can award liberation to anyone. So if you miss these truths about Krishna, you miss the opportunity for liberation from birth, death, disease, and old age. Because they do not know that Krishna has so many transcendental qualifications, they deride him. The appearance of the Supreme Personality of God in this material world is a manifestation of his internal potency. He is the master of the material energy, as has been explained in many places, like 914. Um, the material energy is his energy. It's under his control, however powerful it is. It's under his control. And even if you're uh, under, if the foot of the material energy is stepping on your neck, Krishna can order material energy to back off, to release you. Therefore, surrender to Lord Krishna is the only means to get out of the miseries of this material world. If a soul surrendered to Krishna, now here's a point too. In answer to the mental speculators and the monists who say that Krishna is a conditioned soul, who say that Krishna assumes a body, who say that Krishna is within the modes of material nature, here's a question for you. Prabhupada asked this question how can the Supreme Lord, who conducts the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of the whole cosmic energy, how can that Lord, surrendering to whom one can get out of the conditioned material energy and achieve salvation 
by worshiping that Lord, then how can that Lord himself have a material body like us? No, the Lord does not assume a form out of the modes of material nature, but the Lord himself is multi-formed. Advaitam achutam anantam ananta rupam. Although the Lord is one, infallible, in a sense indivisible living being, he also expands himself into ananta rupam, unlimited forms. He is one and also he is many. And he is also experienced by Lord Brahma, by Lord Chaitanya, by many, many great devotees, um, followers of Bhagavad Dharma. So why don't we take advantage of the knowledge that they're sharing with us instead of going after the monists, the mayavadis, the non-devotees, and the speculators. It is explained that Krishna appears in multi-forms, just like an actor appears and plays different parts on the stage in order to create a drama, to create a certain effect, in order to illuminate the audience in a certain way. But although the actor may appear in different forms, essentially he's one. So don't let the talk of all the avatars and incarnations dupe you into thinking that we worship many gods. That's not the case. We worship one God who is omnipotent, and the evidence of his omnipotency is that from that one original, Shrarup, the original form of the Lord, Shriam Bhagavan, millions and millions of universes, millions and millions of incarnations, millions and millions of living entities, millions and millions of avatars, uh, emanate. And when he comes in one of his transcendental forms, it is for these purposes. Yada yada hi dharma sa glanar bhavad abhutanam dharma sa tadatmanam sridhameham. When there is a drop, when there is a decline in God consciousness and consequent righteous and religiosity, the Lord descends himself and from time to time reveals his super excellent, incomparable, original form in order to inspire living beings to lift themselves back up to righteousness, to devotional life, and only go back home, back to Godhead. Now, other than the original form of Krishna, which has as its only a purpose to reignite our love for him, there are other forms of the Lord for specific purposes, times, place, and circumstances. For instance, the Buddha. When the Buddha appeared, people were using certain passages of the Vedic literature in order to justify the slaughter of animals. There are instances in ancient times when mantras chanted by the highly purified Brahmins could take an old animal and restore it with a new body and give it new life. So this was just to test the efficacy and the powers of the mantra. But taking advantage and misinterpreting some of these phrases, at the time Lord Buddha appeared, the wholesale slaughter of animals was beginning to reel its, uh, uh, show its ugly hand. So Lord Buddha actually rejected the Vedas because it was on the basis of the Vedas that people were rationalized the animal slaughter. Buddha said, in effect, I don't care for your Vedas, but by the force of his personality and promoting the principles of ahimsa, nonviolence, and meta compassion, he checked the rampant wholesale slaughter of animals, rolled it back, and made people more eligible for elevation according to the Vedic patchwork, the Vedic quilt, you might say. So his teaching was basically not elevated, it wasn't transcendental, it was almost trying to get subhumans to become humans. But that was the purpose for which Lord Buddha appeared. Two plus two equals four. That's true throughout all of mathematics. It's true in the beginner's class, uh, and it's also true in the advanced calculus class. It's always true, that elemental axiomatic truth. But there are lower math, levels of math, and there are higher and higher mathematics. So same thing applies to the incarnations of the Lord. Sometimes the Lord comes to preach something very elemental, just to get the people to go from subhuman life to human life. And other times he appears, like with Kapila Dave, to teach a very elevated philosophy to a very, very qualified disciple. But the whole purpose 
of all the multi-forms and all the countless incarnations is to arouse Krishna consciousness everywhere. Take one more example here. Vamana, Aditi, uh, her sons were the demigods and they rule the universe from the upper planets in righteousness and piety. But the demigods, due to a special boon that they had, the demons, um, due to a special boon they had achieved, uh, ousted the demigods, uh, cast them down from the heavenly planets, and the demons now reside in the upper planets and caused unrighteousness to filter throughout the universe. And so Aditi prayed to the Lord, Lord, please incarnate yourself so that everything can be readjusted, so that my sons can be reinstated and righteousness be preserved. So for that purpose, and also to send a message, it just so happened that the king of the demons at that time was a potentially great devotee, the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj, his name was Bali. And so he headed up a whole race of demons. The demons themselves were riddled with lust, anger, envy, and greed. But Bali himself was just, he was a devotee. He had the right priorities. So it's so fascinating how the Lord appeared in just such a way as to satisfy Aditi, to put the demons um, uh, at rest, to kind of appear in such a way that the demons themselves did not feel an imminent threat, and thus to ambush them, and also to fulfill the inner desire of Bali Maharaj to surrender in the footsteps of his grandfather, Prahlad Maharaj, everything to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the Lord appeared in answer to the prayers of Aditi as a tiny dwarf, and his purpose was to take the whole universe back from the demons. Now, how do you do that when you're a dwarf? Not only how do you do that when you're a dwarf, but uh, when Bali Maharaj asked him to accept a boon, he said, I only want three steps of land. How does a dwarf taking three steps of land right the great wrong, correct the great anomaly which is existing in the universe at that time? Who could imagine? And so Bali said, why take three steps of land? I'll give you the whole universe. All you have to do is ask it. And then Vamana gave some very nice instructions, not only for the demons, but for Bali, and also for all of us here in this time and place. He said, Nanya te kamaye rajan badanyas jagat, nenam prapriti vai vidam yavarata pratikurya. No one should take more than is minimally necessary. Human form of life is meant for self-realization. Don't get distracted. Take only what you need for your subsistence and save the balance of your energy for inquiry into the absolute truth. And he also very pointedly said to Bali, who had just conquered the universe. Now, the demons live in the lower planets, but they're more than adequately provided for. The lower planets are actually pretty good. They're they're, they're materialistic people, so the low planets are set up to provide for all of their materialistic needs. They're very well organized, like Japan, for instance. <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't need to storm up and take over the upper planets. That was not necessary for keeping body and soul together. And, and when you do that, when you, when you sell out to your senses, to your lust, to your greed... There's no end to it. It just gets worse and worse. The more you indulge it, the more it blazes up. And so, in this little dwarf incarnation, Brahman dwarf incarnation, speaking to Bali, Vamana Dev says, uh, um, He gives him a good word to the wise. He says, For someone whose senses are uncontrolled, Whatever there is within the three worlds will never satisfy. For one whose senses are uncontrolled, whatever there is within the three worlds will not satisfy. That was a word to the wise. Bali, as a grandson of a devotee, those words were nectar to his ears. Not so much to his followers, not so much to his guru Sukracharya. But that's what Bali wanted to hear. And in that charming form of the dwarf Brahmana, um, uh, Brahmana Dev, 
reciprocated with the desires of Aditi who had invoked him. Time, place, and circumstances. It is said that Gunatmanas tepi gunan bimatam hitabati nashaka isharecha kalena yarva bimakasho kuhe bupamsave miyaka dyobarha. The incarnations of the Lord, and every incarnation, like Vamana Dev, like Parasaram, like Rama, like Korma, Matsya, each and every incarnation is the personification of a quality. We talk about qualities like integrity, like heroism, like compassion. So those qualities live, personify themselves in the form of these incarnations. And there are more qualities to Krishna, and there are therefore more incarnations, more avatars of Krishna, than even stars in the sky, grains of sand on the beach. No one can count them. Gunatmanas tepi gunan bimatam hitaba teneshika ishara kalene yarvav bimatashu kapaya bupamsave miyaka de babsha. In time, great scientists may be able to count the atoms of the universe, all the stars and planets, the particles of snow, but who among them can count the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? He descends on the surface of the globe for the benefit of all living beings. Sanatan Goswami describes the Lord as Gunatma. He is the soul of all superior qualities. Gunatma. We may discuss qualities in an abstract way, generosity, intelligence, and mercy, but they come to life when a living person exhibits them. And thus, Lord Krishna is described as Gunatma because he descends to the material world and reestablishes religious qualities by exhibiting all godly qualities himself and inspiring it in others. And being inspired, being ignited, by the godly qualities that the avatars of the Lord exhibit, we who, can, who aspire to develop those qualities in the association of the Lord, we receive immeasurable benefit and eventually we become eligible to go back home, back to Godhead where life is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. The Lord is pure, pure generosity, pure compassion, pure heroism, if we want to mix with the Lord, if we want to live with the Lord, we have to also evoke those qualities within ourselves. If you want to mix with fire, you have to become like fire. Now, Srila Sanatan Goswami further explains that there is a specific spiritual quality for the benefit of every living being. And since there are innumerable living entities within the confines of the material creation, the Lord manifests infinite qualities. He manifests himself in custom ways for each and every one of the conditioned souls so that those conditioned souls, each and every one, can appreciate and resonate with the Lord in a particular way. According to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, great personalities like Lord Shankar Shan have actually Anantadev, Shankarshan, they have actually counted the number of atoms in the earth, the molecules in the entire universe, yet even they who are continuously chanting the glories of the Lord since time immemorial have not approached a final endpoint or a count of those glories. So finishing up here now, it is explained that Lord Krishna exhibits his most astonishing qualities super excellent above and beyond the purposes for which the avatars appear. His purpose is simply to invite you, to canvas, to beg you on bended knee, to give up your wayward ways, surrender, put yourself in the palm of his hands and qualify yourself to go back home, back to Godhead. And when you do that within view will always be the super excellent childhood pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan, the stealing of butter by Krishna, 
from the cowherd ladies, the dancing of Krishna with his eternally liberated girlfriends, the playing of Krishna with his cowherd boyfriends and his most dear companions. Although appearing as ordinary human activity, such sublime pastimes embody Lord Krishna's immeasurable and innumerable beautiful transcendental qualities, which are the life and soul of the devotees. Finishing up here in the words of Bhakti Siddhanta, which Prabhupada himself quoted on the original 33 RPM LP uh, long playing record that he uh, produced in the beginning of his mission in Krishna consciousness. On the album of that record, you pr find Prabhupada repeating the words of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And we'll terminate our session this morning with these nectarian words, which I'm sure will resonate with each and every one of the experienced devotees. Here it is said, the majestic beauty of Krishna, the Supreme Lord of Goloka, is being described. Krishna, the all-pervading cognition, has a spiritual form of his own. What Brahma saw in his ecstatic trance of pure devotion is being described. Krishna is engaged in playing upon his flute. That flute, by its enchanting musical sound, attracts the hearts of all living beings. Just as a lotus petal produces a pleasant sight, so the two beautiful eyes of Krishna display the unlimited splendor and beauty of his moonlike face. Just as a mass of blue clouds offers a specifically soothing, pleasant view, the complexion of the Lord is analogously tinged with a spiritual dark blue color. The beauty and loveliness of Krishna is far more enchanting than that of Cupid multiplied a million fold. Lord Sri Krishna is the original form of Godhead and he is the last word in transcendence. Om Tat Sat Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Thank you for taking this journey with us on Wisdom Wednesday. Thanks for all your little hearts and stars. Malini from Malaysia, Sundari Priya, Thomas, Prashant, uh, Rupa Manjari, Christine from France, Nate, good morning Nate, Hare Krishna, Bhakti Deva Bareka, appearing more often, Mr. Willie, Jimmy, Madhava, a great Govinda, Dave, you guys yourselves, Alan, Anjali, you guys are Michael, welcome Michael. Doug from City Weeklies, Poppy Pornima. Seeing your recipes on Facebook, Pornima. Good job, Tarlak Varma. Well, the list goes on, Dinesh Kumar. Thank you all. You yourselves are a constellation of stars in the sky, but don't forget that whatever light we have is simply reflected light from the original sun of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.